Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Hey, good evening to you. A beautiful day. Take a look at these clear blue skies in Gibson City on what has been a really nice day with temperatures back in the 70s. As we look at the satellite radar picture, skies are clear. Lots of sunshine today, and we've got temperatures that are in the low and mid 70s right now. Take a look. 75 in Champaign, 77 degrees in Springfield right now. More of this warmth will be around as we go throughout the next couple of days. Winds out of the southwest 10 to 15 miles an hour as we go throughout this evening. We'll see temperatures once again cooling back off to those low 50s. More about another big warm up for tomorrow when we come back. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Spring break at the U of I may look different this year. Why university leaders want to change which days students get off. Plus, two people are dead and several others hurt after a crash this morning. How police say it happened. And a pharmacy is closed for repairs after its ceiling collapsed. Why the owner says it is so important to get this shop back up and running. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. I don't think that the change is going to make any difference. But some university leaders think it will, and that's why they're considering taking away spring break, or at least the one most of us are used to. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The Academic Senate is considering this because it means students will be less likely to travel. That also means reduced risk of COVID-19 exposure. But some students doubt it will make any difference. WCI3's Courtney Bunting is live from campus. Courtney, so students just won't get the time off? Well, actually, Jennifer, it will be separated this year. They won't get it consecutively like they're used to. For example, they might get a Wednesday off in the middle of the week, and that will make it difficult for them to travel anywhere and then come back. But that's the idea behind it. This proposed schedule would also change the dates of the start of the spring semester. It'll move it back by a week. That's to give students time to test and quarantine or isolate if necessary. Senate leaders say they specifically avoided days off like Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays when choosing these three separate days for students to have off because getting those days means students will likely travel. I talked to students who had mixed feelings about this schedule. I feel like students are still going to travel, especially since classes will probably be online anyway, and families are going to plan vacations no matter what. Also, I feel like a lot of people might actually be traveling during that time, so just for like safety reasons, I get why they're doing the changes. Senate leaders tell me these recommendations were made based on lessons they learned this semester. They saw what worked and what didn't when it comes to handling COVID-19. This proposed schedule was made with that knowledge in mind. That schedule is on the agenda for the meeting Monday night for the Senate, and they plan to vote on it then. Live in Champaign, Courtney Bunting, WCIA3, your local news leader. Courtney, thank you. The current proposal pushes the spring semester from starting January 19th to starting the 25th. It would also give students three days without classes, one in February, March, and April. Students who don't have all their vaccinations no longer have to worry about getting kicked out of their virtual classrooms. The state changed the rules, which originally didn't make a distinction between in-person and remote learning. Students are still required to get vaccinations before returning to in-person learning, but since many districts had to cancel opportunities to help students get them, the state is cutting students some slack. We were not able to do some of the great community-based programs that we normally are able to do. Um, we always have clinics on our registration day and throughout the first few weeks of the, of the school year to really help families uh, get up to speed on those requirements. Springfield still has more than 800 students who are not properly vaccinated. As of last week, Champaign and Decatur Public Schools had more than 1,000. Let's take a look at statewide coronavirus numbers now. Illinois reached a grim milestone today in connection to COVID-19. More than 9,000 total deaths since the pandemic began. Health officials say 29 people died in the last 24 hours, and that includes a man in his 70s from DeWitt County. There were more than 2,800 new cases statewide in the last 24 hours, and that brings the total number of infections 
diagnosed since the pandemic began up to th nearly 325,000. Now the state's positivity rate continues to rise now up to four and a half percent. Two people are dead after several vehicles crashed on I-57 just north of Paxton. State police say a 26-year-old man from Onarga crossed the median and hit another driver. That's when a semi-truck hit the back of that second car. A passenger in that car, a 21-year-old woman from Pembroke, Pembroke Township, was killed along with the Onarga man. A three-week-old was flown to the hospital to be treated. An Abraham Lincoln reenactor is set to go on trial in December for child pornography and prostitution. 63-year-old George Buss of Freeport pleaded not guilty. He's accused of possessing a child pornography video and patronizing a prostitute. Buss had portrayed Lincoln for more than 30 years in the state, including a Civil War weekend in Coles County last year. A documentary about Ying Ying Zhang's case is now playing at the Chicago International Film Festival. I am alone in this foreign country. There are not many people like me on the road. Zhang was a visiting Chinese scholar at the U of I. She was kidnapped and killed in 2017 by Brent Christensen. He was sentenced to life in prison. This documentary is called Finding Ying Ying. It follows her case and her family's search for her remains. I always want to make a film about Ying Ying and her family. And I really hope after the audience watch the film, they can walk away with a, an image of a talented young woman and how much her life has touched others. That film festival is happening virtually. You can buy a ticket online to watch the documentary. We have more information on our website. A county board approved a wind farm this summer. Why its opponents will now be taking their battle to court. Plus this. Hopefully get them... Uh, back up and running soon. A pharmacy is picking up the pieces after its ceiling collapsed. How its temporary closure will impact the entire community.